My name is Eric Wager. Um, and in the back, we have Everett Golden. We're both part of the implementation team that put together uh, the hands-on labs here, the infrastructure for the hands-on <coughs> labs here for VMworld. Um, so we're going to do a very, uh, since it's not packed, we're going to hopefully do a quick overview at 50,000 foot so we can at least get everyone out. And if you want to continue to do a lab today, which we're stopping seating at 3 o'clock because we have a very hard stop at 4 o'clock. So we're just going to jump right in. This is our legal mumbo jumbo. It says you shouldn't be doing probably what you're already doing. So again, we're going to go very, very high view um, of what our current uh, strategy is for um, our, our lab labs around the world. Currently, we have uh, three data centers, so we'll quickly go over those. Um, very high view of the lab architecture itself. There was a few other sessions that went more deeply into the lab, individual lab architecture. We're not going to do that. We just want to talk about the infrastructure that runs the labs themselves. The challenges and opportunities that we've had now versus the past years. Um, last year was kind of close to what we're doing now, where we had a hybrid cloud. This year, everything is remote. Um, the last part, we'll do just, again, just the core infrastructure and the services that we're using. So as you can see, we have three data centers. One here actually is in uh, Vegas. The other two are going to be remote. One on the east coast of the US. The other one is in Western Europe. Uh, the numbers that you see on the screen for VMworld 2010, we are trying to beat those for this year. At the moment, um, well, so last year we had 44 hours of lab. Uh, this year we have 50. Last year we had 145,000 VMs deployed. At the moment when I left, I believe the number was 132. So we're not exactly going to be beating it. So should come close. these were our original numbers for 2011, where 50 lab hours again, and our targets, which again, we're not going to meet, was 225 to 250. Now, that's across three data centers. How many in, in the session today actually has uh, three global data centers, or multiple global data centers? A few. And how many of you guys can do, at, at the moment, what we've done, 130,000 uh, VM creation and deletions in about 50 hours? No one. Come on. Got to be one. None? OK. So what we've done for, for the sessions themselves have been we've broken it out to five different ones. Uh, core, which is what we're in now, 4003. The next one for cloud and virtualization, for, for hardware architecture. Portal, which is the actual lab itself. How do you get into from our side into the lab and then start using the lab. Um, and something new this year with vSphere 5 is auto deploy. So we decided to go ahead and start a, a session for that. So we run our, our network and our infrastructure, we try to at least, to run it like an enterprise. So we have firewalls, we have multi vendor sites. So at the current moment in Vegas, we have um, super micro gear. We have UCS gear, so Cisco. We also have an Accenta, EMC, and NetApp. Now, the majority of this has been net new for Vegas. The other two sites for Amsterdam and Miami, we've had hardware refreshes on smaller pieces of the environment. So the EMCs and the NetApps, we've been refreshing this year. Some of the networking for Miami has been done, uh, refreshed. The firewall, which we use in Miami and Amsterdam, is Juniper SRX. Uh, that has stayed the same from last year, along with the UCS that we have there. For, for firewall here in Vegas, we have a Palo Alto Networks. So we have kind of the same uh, architecture and infrastructure. It's just not the exact same. Those, as you well know, have their own problems. We're not going to go exactly into that today. 
So for very high view again, our user access. So we are VMware. We do like to eat our own dog food. So we are using vSphere 5, and we are using View 5. So some people may have uh, remembered that vSphere 5 GA'd this, this week and was announced. Uh, View 5, on the other hand, has not yet. So all of our users here and later on in Copenhagen are going to be using View servers into the actual environments. We, on the other hand, we can use View or we can SSL VPN in if we need to. Again, going back to the security and the firewalls that we use. For uh, security management and passwords, we use Manage Engine. So Manage Engine can easily go out to any of the server, any of the Windows servers if we want it to, and get the passwords and store them centrally. That is very beneficial for us. We have a very distributed work group or group within the country. So there's a few of us in California, there's a few in Florida, there's even a few in Virginia. And recently we've gotten a few developers out of the Cambridge, Massachusetts office. For monitoring, this is one of our weakest points. Was anyone in the labs on Monday or Sunday? Any issues that you guys saw? Just a few? <laughs> so a, a big problem that we have, we can monitor our stuff, but we can't monitor what goes on when there's a high load, nor can we monitor what's going on in the lab. That's one of the hardest pieces that we have to solve. We don't know how to solve it. One of the other parts of the session, if anyone has ideas of how to help us help you, we'd love to hear it. So there's three of the uh, monitoring that we use now. Zangati, which is for PC over IP. There's an agent or a, a, really a VM that gets deployed to all of the ESX hosts. And then any network, any network monitoring we want to do, we can add that as well. Um, from there, we use our old backup email for any email alerts that we have. So at the current moment, we have uh, our NetApps and our VNXs going to that for alerts. Of course, if, if ever the internet goes down, all of the internets, then we're kind of bad. Then the latest one that we have, which is VC Ops, we're at the moment not sure if it is going to suit our needs. That is a very difficult thing for us to say because, again, we like to eat our own dog food and we like to make sure that our products are the best. So it's sad to say, we're not really sure at the moment if VC Ops is going to solve our problems. The last part that we have is network management for, from the IP and DNS space. Last year, or previous years really, we've, we used uh, spreadsheets. Enter everything into the spreadsheet and then import it with uh, uh, Windows tools. The problem with that is, for us at least, we shared everything through Dropbox. Someone would make a change, Everyone else would see the change. But with that change also meant someone deleted it, everyone else missed it as well. So with IPAM, which we're currently using InfoBlox for DNS, DHCP, and IPAM itself, or DDI, which you'll see later in the session, um, we've been able to centralize everything. So each site has a InfoBlox server and a um, management cluster that can be promoted if any of the other management uh, clusters go down. Are there any questions so far? Yes? Oh, the, the Zimbra. So what we're using Zimbra for at the moment is just email alerts. So at the moment, we have a few from our NetApps and our VNXs. We're not using it for uh, like an email client or email server like a traditional one just uh, more of a relay. Any others? So of the ones that have global data centers, how many have had any issues or challenges to implement those global data centers? OK, good. Making sure that, that we weren't the only ones that actually have any problems. So from 
our view, we wanted to make sure that we could build once and deploy many, not only locally to the data center, but also build once in one data center and then distribute it out to the other two or multiples if we actually get up to that point. At the current moment, we've been able to build everything in our Vegas data center and then transfer everything over to either Miami or Amsterdam. So at the moment, uh, VMworld US is running on all three data centers. And once we go, and primary is here in Vegas. Once we go to Copenhagen, what's gonna happen is we'll flip it and we'll make it where Amsterdam is the primary. And Miami and Vegas is going to be the secondary or something with a lower load. The latency from here to Amsterdam or Vegas is high. So that's why we want to keep everything local here in Vegas and then flip it around once we get to Copenhagen. For business continuance, how many people still use tape drives? Awesome. Thankfully, we've been able to get away from that. We have naively thought that we don't need to have anything backed up because everything that we have is, is distributed and replicated in our own methods. So that means that we have AD, and that's replicated. We have three sites. We have a domain, a Active Directory domain per site, and then we have a root forest. So one site goes down, we'll still have all of the data in a different site. But what does that mean for us if we need to, say, recover a SQL server or a vCenter <coughs> server? That means that we had to rebuild it from scratch. Is that bad? Not necessarily, but also it's not the most efficient thing to be doing. So we're also looking for, in addition to monitoring, we're also looking to see what solution for us is going to be best for backups and, and of course, recoveries. Are there any ideas that could help us for that? I would say Legato Networker. I'm sorry? EMC. We. Excellent. We've been looking at some of that technology as well. So, to give you an idea of our storage capacity, currently we have uh, new NetApps here in Vegas. They have SAS drives, so they are 600 gigs by 48 per controller. So doing the math and then telling you that the lab, all labs combined is about two terabytes, two, 2.5. We have more than enough capacity to do snaps and to do, do them properly and do them frequently if we so choose. It's at the moment just something that we haven't looked at. Um, going back to networker or net backup, being VMware, we do get a very deep discount for anything that is EMC based. So for example, we have great ties with the VMware Alliance at EMC. All of our VNXs are free. When we use, at the moment, four 5700s, two here and one each at the other two sites. So just to kind of touch on that a little bit, um, I understand the concept of backups. I've been doing IT for, for a few years. We've seen it all the time. But with the distributed workload, essentially what we're doing is we're taking our, our good workload that we have here in Las Vegas, we're distributing it across all three sites. So that way we don't theoretically need a backup. We could potentially have a backup and store it somewhere off site, but the idea is to have each three sites replicated to each other so that if a single site goes down, that data is still existing and still up and running on another site. So the idea of having a backup, while it, it's probably still a good idea, it's probably not on the forefronts of our mind anymore because we can distribute that data, that workload everywhere across all of our sites, and we don't really necessarily have to have things backed up. Yeah, the, that, that's true. Like I said, I didn't say that backup is ab absolutely non-existent anymore, but what it is is it alleviates the need for a full backup of everything that we have in a single site. And there, 
Um, Correct. And the actual single labs themselves. Yeah. That's true. But again, if all of the data and all the connections are replicated across each other, I, I, to your point, if something's deleted in one site, it's replicated. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, what the idea behind having the, all of our data, all of our information replicated across all sites, so if one site goes down, that we, we can absolutely recover because all of that data is sitting somewhere else. Backing up the management cluster, it's, it's there, it's, it's an option, but again, from an HA DRS perspective, if I take something down, it should have resilience enough to actually come back up, come back up without having a problem. One more? Absolutely. 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 That's, this, has, this has nothing to do with SOX compliance. Don't tell any of the SOX compliance agents that I told you you shouldn't back your data up, because that's not true. <laughs> yeah, we're, not, we're really not fans of auditing. So just to give you guys an idea of who, who we are, we, we're, we formed a team called the Integrations Engineering Team inside of VMware. Uh, my name's Everett Golden. This is Eric Wager. We're both implementation architects. Um, what we've been tasked to do is to work closely with VMware Engineering to help integrate our products and, and bring them together on a very, uh, a, a very con, con, a very con, uh, I can't think of the word, but make them all work together, a very integrated fashion, make them all work together and make them all work better together so that when we deliver them to the customers, we can sell that one single thing. Hey, we've got con, con, continuity between all of our products so you guys can work them all together. There's a single line of messaging, there's a single line of everything where everything works together to give you guys that, that road to the cloud. Okay, so we'll go ahead and continue with some of our challenges. So how do we make it look like there's one data center for you guys, the attendees or the lab, um, the people taking the labs? So here in Vegas, again, the majority of the stations are plugged in and being pointed to Vegas data center. So all of their labs and their latency is gonna be Vegas based. From here to our data center, we have maybe five milliseconds. From here to Amsterdam, maybe 170. The beauty of all of this is that with PC over IP, it's a bearable solution. It's a bearable um, environment for you. The majority of you probably wouldn't even recognize that it's at a, in a different country. If, if you go to Miami, it might be a little bit better, but again, you're not going to notice. When I've been doing the V forums, which are many, many VM worlds for South Africa, and we, Everett and I did one in Sydney, we didn't notice much um, issue and in, in degradation of any of the user experience. Our latency at that point was, for South Africa, upwards of one second. Down for Sydney, nowhere near that, so maybe about 300 max. And that was with all, all of the stations uh, maxed out and everyone just logging in. For Copenhagen, again, we'll flip it around. So everyone in Copenhagen is gonna have a experience that's closer physically to them. Network-wise and latency-wise, it'll be closer as well. And a fewer portion of the stations will also go to Vegas, but since there's a fewer, fewer stations going to Vegas, they won't experience anything negative to, negatively like they would if, if all stations were going to Vegas or something that was much, much further away. One, one other issue, another issue that we've had has been network consistency in time, NTP, uh, DNS, um, Authentication, again, we, since we have Active Directory, we use everything that's plugged into Active Directory. We try to leverage Active Directory as much as we can. We, for time, what we've been doing is using Infoblox. Infoblox has many, many um, objects that it can support. One of them is NTP, DNS, DHCP, and IPAM itself. So far, we haven't had a problem, and we don't hope to have a problem. How, so here in total, uh, across all three data centers, we have 750 plus uh, physical servers. 
out of the people that have, um, are familiar with deploying servers, how many of you can do that many uh, in under four months? In including uh, planning, pushing through the PO, getting the PO cut, and then delivery. I'm sorry? So just, we've, just we've so experienced guys, that as well. Just so you guys understand what, what, what we're getting at is the, the challenge of building this environment from conception um, and architecture to the point of us actually getting here um, and being able to deliver labs, you guys, has taken us about four and a half months. Meaning we procured the equipment, we had it delivered, we procured our sites, we got all of our links up, we've got all of the equipment installed, storage installed, everything deployed in four and a half months. And just to, to even take that a little bit further, I mean, from our core infrastructure perspective, we built uh, an Active Directory site, we registered domain names, we had everything that, we, that, that would be conceivable to a small company, right? Building a small company in four months is, is literally what we did. So, so, what's that? No, it didn't. No, it didn't sneak up on, on us. But from a con concept perspective of what we wanted to do, the labs that we wanted to deliver, and the content in those labs, um, it's the, all of those things are being vetted out over a period of a year. Now, another thing is, this is not all that we do in in, in that year. So that's why sometimes we, we, we come across these deadlines and we, we push them to the end. And we, we do a lot of on-site betas, we do a lot of beta other programs, we do a lot of V-forms around the world. So Eric and I, our team, we're always constantly being pulled everywhere. So this is, VMworld unfortunately is not the only thing that we do, because if it was, I would only work three months a year. <laughs> but I'll go back to what this other gentleman said about the PO taking two months. I'll tell you a little bit of, of the cheating part about the statement. So out of the three data centers, we have two that have mostly the same hardware as the years before, but everything had to be torn down, reconnected because of different architecture now, and then rebuilt from scratch. Everett, on the other hand, has a complete data center here in Vegas from scratch. So there, there are benefits and disadvantages to both, and we try to recognize that Unfortunately, from, from our point of view, we've been doing this five years. So we think that everyone has 700 and plus servers and, and everyone else does 130 plus VMs in 50 hours. So we have a very warped perspective. The challenges or opportunities presented by our current strategy. So how do you get hardware from here to where it's going. So if you're sending most things currently, you'd probably think of FedEx or UPS. What we had to do is pack everything up, put it onto crates, and then ship it across the country. But everything that was involved prior to doing that, getting all of the contracts changed over to whichever country or location they're going to, getting all of the hardware swapped out if we needed to swap it out, which I needed to for Amsterdam, and then contacting the, the local site and saying, this is what's coming, can you actually support it? So of course with different time zones, and I, I bring that up because I went to Amsterdam and I worked two different time zones. Amsterdam, break, and then everyone on the west coast, I would work with them as well. So my sleep pattern was a little skewed, shall we say. So Amsterdam was all done. Same thing had to happen for Miami. There was hardware replace, replacements that needed to be performed, and we did that. We did that, obviously, even quicker than what we could for Amsterdam. How the pro, another problem that we've come across has been what can be centralized and what doesn't need to be centralized. So Everett, like I said, has brought up uh, Vegas. He's got the majority of the servers. Again, out of the 740, the majority of them are here. The, the way that we do the majority of our, of our lab building has been here in Vegas, and then we ship it out over, over the network. We ship it out over to Amsterdam and Miami. Out of the 2.5 terabytes, it took us uh, roughly two to three days. How many others can ship two and a half terabytes that quickly? 
Excellent. What do you guys use? SRDF? What was that one? A. What was that one? DFSR. So, so just, just to give a better concept of this, two and a half terabytes over multiple data centers, it was actually roughly about 1.4 terabytes going from one site to the next. We did it all over the internet, IPsec tunnels, um, and that, an actual single transfer from one data center to the next took about four and a half hours. It was roughly about 1.4 terabytes of data. Um, 2.6, 2.8 was like our total data move between all data sites. So additional things that need to be thought about that we actually did not think about during our four months was what needed to be consistent versus what did not need to be consistent. So I mentioned that the hardware in the other two data centers outside of Amsterdam or outside of Vegas are a little bit mixed. So everything in Miami and Amsterdam is quite different than what's in here in Vegas. So there's a bit of a different compute infrastructure. There's a bit different uh, networking and a bit different firewall infrastructure. So far, like I said, we haven't run into any issues trying to connect everything, and hopefully we don't run into more or run into any at all. How many, are there many people here that actually have a um, single vendor, say UCS, uh, Cisco, so everything is a Cisco shop? One, two, three, excellent. Has that helped you at all? Why, why do you say not really? Mostly politics. What about from the technical aspect? Okay. Yeah. For Someone in the back also mentioned um, SRDF and SRDFA, sorry. Uh, what other technologies uh, for replication do people use? Snapmere. Yeah, that was mentioned too. Which one? Peer. You're cheating. Excellent. We like cheating. Any other technologies? Recover point. You said that one? Yes. How's that working for you? Works well. Excellent. You want to come implement it for us? Okay. So, so what kind of what kind of data the, I I guess I, maybe to get a better understanding, what kind of data are you guys talking about moving? Are you guys just talking about files? Are you guys just talking about, you know, day to day usage stuff um, that you guys are moving? I mean, on a slower link or on a schedule? Okay. Has anybody ever tried to move virtual machines across WAN links? How, what, what kind of transfers? What were you using as that technology in between? So one of the technologies we used last year was Silverpeak. It, it, it helped us a lot mostly because we, we had to transfer everything through sneaker net. Thankfully, this year, we don't have to do that. So, so the difference between last year and, and this year, we used the WAN accelerator with Silver Peak. We moved a lot of data. It did help us a lot. Um, this year, we did it without a WAN accelerator. Um, and we saw we, we were just moving straight point-to-point -point copies um, over WAN links via IPsec tunnels, things like that, of our, uh, things of that nature, connections between our points and um, and we were, we were just moving really huge amounts of data. So, I, I mean, we're always interested. At, we're always interested to find out what kind of technologies our, our our customers are using because if it's something that we could look at and and implement, that would be something definitely that we would we would be interested in in what not learning. What's that? Um, it's internet bandwidth. Whatever our internet connection was, I think what we asked. What we asked for in Switch was 100 meg pipes, dual 100 meg pipes, just for redundancy. What we have in uh, in Miami Terramark is the same thing, dual 100 meg pipes, just for, specifically for redundancy. 
and then in Colt Amsterdam, I'm not sure what it is. I believe it's it's also 100 megs. Yep. So these are just straight 100 meg internet pipes that these guys are giving us. There's no point to point. There's no there's no WAN acceleration between them. Nothing special that our our data center vendors are giving to us. So. Any other questions? Comments, statements. Okay. So. Going back to a few parts of what are we monitoring and how are we doing it? At the moment, we're using the majority of VC ops. So like I said, at the moment, we're not seeing everything that we want to see. Like any other normal customer, we want one place to go that has all of the information that we would ever want. And like any other customer, we never find it. So the benefit about being VMware is that we can use it and then pick up the phone and complain to product management or engineering and say, why are you not doing this? Sometimes they'll say, we didn't think about that, or actually it's over here, here, and here. And from a UI perspective or experience, we never would have thought of something like that. So we've got great feedback currently back into engineering just from using our product uh, for VMworld itself. And that's only for a few days. So even though it's a few days, it's very uh, high intensity and uh, a lot of stress on us and also for the product management. So like I said, we were going to be going through this, this session very quickly and we're already at the summary. So are there questions or comments so far? Yes. So very, very, very high level. Think of it as a UDP with TCP control. So we don't really, we don't do array to array right next to each other and then ship out the replicated. We do it completely over the network. And the easiest way to, to give an example is UDP with TCP control. We're in the process of that. So we're alpha and beta testing our own stuff within the group in addition to doing it for the company itself. Yes. We are using one cell. Uh, no, actually, so VCD, the concept of VCD is you can put multi-cells and it acts somewhat like a VIP, a virtual, uh, a virtual uh, IP that we can actually manage across all those cells. Um, on top of that, we also have an F5 load balancer that actually load balances across all VCDs and helps us with balancing the load across our VCD cells. So in our Las Vegas site, I, we have three cells. Um, I believe in our Miami and Amsterdam site, we, we, to manage those verticals, we also have three cells Correct. in each site. So the concept of what we did was we built uh, what we call group verticals. Um, so we grouped verticals of servers um, spanned across multiple chassis so that there's redundancy. We don't have a single point of failure. Uh, if a chassis goes, goes dead, I still have other hosts within that cluster that are online and running and operational. So we striped it across multiple chassis so that there's no single point of failure from a server perspective. And then um, each one of those verticals is managed by a VC and then joined to a, a, a VCD. So, yep. Correct. Well, what's the question again? So, so we're not we're not using anybody's cloud. We're 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 creating our own private cloud to deliver for what we're doing for VMworld. Um, does that does that mean we can't roll it into a public cloud? <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we're not using any services. Nothing from uh, from Terramark, from Amsterdam Cold, and from SwitchNap in Vegas. The only thing that's being provided from us is uh, space. Uh, cooling and um, power, uh, power, and the internet drop. So, otherwise, everything else is built and run straight from us, from our infrastructure. And you, sir? Yep. TBD. 
Well, what's the question? Are we going to be extending lab hours where almost near 24-7, if not 24-7? During the event? Uh, year round. So, so again, what I, what, I, what I was mentioning earlier, that right now we're doing everything as a, as a, public, uh, a, a private cloud to deliver for VMworld Labs, um, but it has the ability to go public. Um, again, it's, to Eric's point, TBD, to be determined. It's something from a public aspect that we're looking at. So, so the big vision, the big vision on what we're what we're looking at doing is actually offering the VMworld Labs um, around the world, anywhere in the world, as a as a web portal. You could log in from a web <laughs> portal. You could pay pay to get access to the labs, and you can actually come in and do a lab. So, so again, it's like I said, it's to be determined. Don't get it's excited. Something that we're working on. <laughs> well, we'll take it now. You're not going to get a lab yet. What, what was your question? Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's about 700 servers across three sites. Between 700 and 750 servers, that's about right, right? Yeah. Um, so, so as of the time when we started this session, we provisioned and destroyed 132,000 VMs over the, over the course of the lab, lab days been open. I, I, I anticipate that based on the, the, the amount of traffic we were getting, we'll probably do somewhere about the 150 to 160,000 range. Uh, keep in mind that's, that is less than what we did last year, but we also were missing 6,000 attendees that were supposed to come that didn't come. Um, and the labs are a lot bigger than they were last year. I don't know if anybody, anybody did labs last year. Um, the labs last year were all averaging about an hour apiece. This year we had to bump the time to an hour and a half. The reason why we did that was because one of the challenges that we put to our team was we wanted to make the content richer. We didn't want to have a user come sit down at a lab and just do a point and click through point and click session through the labs. We'd rather have them have some kind of a real world experience with it, give them some kind of a scenario where each one person can sit down, read through a little bit of the lab, understand what's going on, and then walk through walk through the lab in a progression and understand why you're doing what you're doing. So we extended that time on the labs to an hour and a half. So that's why we also got a few, a little bit less than what we did last year. So, yes. Like, um, I know that you saw lab extracts while uh, the process. Can we have that like access to the VM? Can you have the the the, 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 the lab the extracts or the, the manuals? The, so the lab extracts and the manuals will all, will be available. Um, or on, from the VMworld website, the site that you guys use to register. So I, I don't know when it's going to be available, but it's usually a week to two weeks after. Yeah. So. But if you're asking for the actual VMs. No, not all. Okay. Okay. Did you? Yeah. Did you attend VMworld last year? No. no. VM, VM, we, we will make all content collateral okay. available. Uh, VMworld, they do it every year. They make all content collateral available. Unfortunate, the unfortunate part about all of this is every VMworld, we get to a point where we're displaying beta information. We're, we're displaying um, NDA information. We're giving everybody the opportunity to see some of the roadmaps and some of the futures of our products. So that's probably the information that you're not seeing that's not being released on the site um, because we just don't, we, we're, we can't put it out there. From last year until this year, we did just a lab last year. This year, we did more of a scenario or example-based. Was anyone at VMworld uh, US last year? How are the labs, uh, the content of the labs this year versus last year? Wow, okay. Did you put that in the survey? I did. Excellent. Okay. Any So there was overlap with lab one, lab three? Yeah, the whole chain charge pack. Yeah. 
OK. And you put that in the survey? Again. OK. Again, put, put all of this information in the survey. This is the only way that we get this feedback so that we can make these things better, we can make the labs better. We can, we, can, we can customize them to the way that you guys want them, right? The customers, what do you guys want to see? What, what can we make in these labs to make them better? Yeah. What's that? So, so I was I was actually going to get to that in a second, but this gentleman over here had a question. Yep. At the moment, we don't have follow the sun support. Are you? Well, let me ask a question for that. Are you talking about on our side or on the yeah, provider? On the management of the infrastructure, you have during Miami sleeping hours, you wouldn't be able to get access to the administrators. So all of all of the architects and admins are here and within our team. So we pretty much know where they are all the time. Uh, at the moment, we don't have a follow the sun model, though. If we, like this gentleman wanted to give us his credit card, we're more than happy to take it. <laughs> but at the moment, we don't have anything set up for, for the public. That, that has been a, a discussion in the last couple of months. And it's been a discussion before, but even more so now that we have a better distribution of the environment. No, we didn't have time. There was one point yes. in time where we actually started pulling plugs on our redundant switches to see what the failover was like. And that's about all we, all we could do. There was, yep. 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 Simulate the load? No. No. We, we did do a load simulation based on numbers that we got from last year's VMware. We, but every year, whenever we come to an event like this, our, our only validation of whether or not it's working is having 480 people sit down and, and work through this. This is why we suffered. So, OK, to repeat the question, how are we replicating the lab? Is it either a static or a, a an automated function once a lab has been updated? At the current moment, we're very we're overly strict on what goes into the lab and when it's finished. So our finish point was a couple of weeks ago. Like any other deadline, it, it slips. So the deadline ended up to be last week sometime. Which is why it took a few days to get everything across the ocean and across to Miami. Um, we've been testing, again, the UDP and TCP thing um, to be automated. And that, the automation point hasn't come in just yet. It's mostly there. It's not fully there. So someone has to be there to make sure that it starts and it stops. Um, and a few other things that I honestly don't remember the details of. Other than that, it, it's, it goes quite well. Correct. The majority of our, of our labs are for a shelf life of one year. So we'll go through this exercise again for VMworld 2012. And then we'll use those labs from 12 until all the way until 13 comes back around. We try not to add um, any VM content. We'll update the manual if we need to, but none of the actual VM content itself. Other questions, comments? Help us help you? Perfect. 50 minutes, 10 minutes back in your day. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Yes.